Ik heb een paar Ik stel voor Makreitzer aan die woord. Ik ken hem nu zeker om 30 jaar of zo. Een goede vriend van mij, hij is professor tot, ik denk het is augustus, nee. Bij Grand Canyon University in de VSA in missionologie. Hij gaat voor ons die volgende lezing doen over. Uh, is this the right one? Ja, ja, ja. Ik heb die dit een beetje van Oké, ja, ik wou sê die titel lijkt van een beetje anders. Maar basis waar we die lezen gaan, daar op die tafel is daar een oranje boekie. En in die boekie, um, dit is een boekie wat Mark Reitzer gedoen het. Um, so, Hier die uh, Ja. Dit, hy lijkt so. Dit is wat hij opgestel het. Dit sê Manifest vir Christen in Zuidelijke Afrika. So hy het dit opgestel in die negentigs um, vir ons als Christen en het is vertaal in, ek denk, soeets soos vijf van die tale van, van Zuid-Afrika, en sluit en dan ook Engels. Hy het intussen ook opgedateer, so hy gaan vir ons een lezing doen rondom hierdie boekie, en dan gaan hy een beetje inzoom op specifieke aspekte. Dankie, Mark, ons dankie. Oké, okay, baie, dankie. <coughs> nou, ek kan een beetje Afrikaans praat, um, ek het al baie beter kon praat in die laast uh, 30 jaar gelede, ik heb bij um, uh, dominee uh, Dr. Chris Jordan gewerkt bij Circles Centrum voor uh, um, wat is het um, Centrum voor Christelijke en Reformatorische um, Studies, ja, yeah, Circles. Um, dit was die O Anticom, um, die O Anticommunistische Actiecommissie wat oorgeskakel het tot tot um, wereld uh, lieve en wereldbeschouwing. En um, Dominique Chris was uh, betrokken bij uh, als het Dominique in die Weermacht en alle het hem uh, binnen in die psychologische oorlogsvoeringsgebied. So hy het een baie uh, goeie sin van, van die richting van, van Zuid-Afrika wat waarin die land gaan. Um, so, ik zal oorskakel na um, Amerikaans, ik is niet Engelsman nie, ik <coughs> um, is een Amerikaner, um, dit is een beetje anders, <coughs> onder de andere soort van uh, geschiedenis. Um, so, what he did was, in 1988, um, he began to develop um, articles of the Christian worldview, similar to um, what you would see in the uh, uh, a Confession of Faith, a Lewis belatedness. And um, he developed it <coughs> in, in, a, in several different languages. This is an English version. But this was a short version to be put into the hands of the uh, two school children. And, we, and our, our vision was to put it into the hands of every um, African, um, European. Um, we didn't have it in Portuguese, but we had it in English, in Afrikaans, in Kosa, in um, Zulu, Tswana, the, the major languages, so that they could understand, if they were a Christian, what the battle was that was going on in South Africa at the time. So we were studying the ideologies. And he wanted to say, you can't fight something with nothing. We have to have uh, um, something to be able to... Oh, okay. Hier die heb ik verder. Zo? Is dat beter? Ja, oké, okay, sorry. Um, we can't fight something with nothing. We need to fight with counter ideas. An idea has to be fought with other ideas which are more powerful, the ideas of the kingdom of God. So that's why I said we need to study, and this is um, um, actually 20 articles and it's now been expanded to 22 articles um, dealing with the areas that the um, humanistic, the human-centered, man-centered ideologies of our um, Western world <coughs> are attacking the Afrikaner, attacking the Zulu, attacking the Swana. It's not something just for, Afri for the Afrikaner, but that's why we put it in all the, la the languages. Um, and you know, this was a hard uh, copy that they made that has uh, both um, Afrikaans and English. And there's a, um, 
there's a larger form. So this is the small form for the school children. This is a larger form for um, those who are um, more educated and, and more comprehensive. And then we've got, um, so this was the original one. Then we've developed <coughs> over the last several years, I've been able to expand it, write a commentary on it, give study questions for group study, and uh, a further reading list. <coughs> so this, hopefully, by God's grace, will be published hopefully in the next year or so here in South Africa. And it's now no longer the Manifesto for Christians in Southern Africa, <coughs> that well, Manifesto for Christians in Africa. And the dream is to publish one for the Philippines, for Indonesia, for several languages in India, and um, several other languages uh, like Hausa and um, Igbo in, um, and um, Kikuyu in, um, in Nigeria and in um, um, Kenya and various other um, uh, major lands in Africa. So the goal is to equip us to, f to, to be able to build and rebuild in the light of a neo-Marxian. Now, what is a neo-Marxian? Well, it is no longer pure Karl Marx, um, Vladimir Lenin, um, the, the classic Soviet um, Marxism. It's a new kind of Marxism in which um, all of the ideas of life in every area of life must be infiltrated with a humanist ideology. The only way you can, um, you can um, fight that is to give 22 articles of an answer to each one. So we have article on the, the true God and why it is important to believe in the Trinity. Um, what is protection and how can we and should we ever resist authority? Should we have church, this is controversial, um, during a plague. In the Middle Ages, in the Black Plague, no church ever was closed because the, uh, the, the leaders of the church said, the church is the place where we come to pray and ask God to protect us. Now, is it right or is it wrong to resist a secular authority that tells us to close down? Well, that, there's a whole article about that. Gives us some guidelines. Education, a mother language education, biblical rights and responsibilities that come out of the Ten Commandments. Um, private property, why that's so important. Um, about the church, <coughs> agriculture and stewardship, and society. So there's many, many. There's 22. Um, arranged to follow Bible's history. It starts off with God, He's the creator of the heavens and the earth. Um, and then under creation, he gives us a, uh, something about the human, the view of who is humanity. What is humanity? Um, about covenant and how we're um, in a relationship with God from the beginning. He wants a broken relationship to be restored. Covenant. <clears throat> and that comes... Um, the, the, the fall or the rebellion and sin that enters into human race comes from um, the fall of Adam and he introduced a curse upon every area of culture. Now that doesn't make the physical evil, it just makes our perversion of God's good creation evil. Some people say, oh well, I am physical, I must escape from physicality, you know, I. I want to no longer be a man, I want to be a woman. I want to be something different. No, God created us, man and wo uh, woman, and it was very good. What God wants to do is restore our correct view of how he created us so that we can rejoice in the physicality of what he gave, um, that God wants to restore that all. <clears throat> and he does that through the salvation that comes through Christ, the centrality of history, all of history moves down to Christ from the creation and uh, human beings and all of societies were designed by God to fail until Christ. The one God-fearing, God-loving, God-trusting God-man. Both God and man. And from there, he brings his powerful resurrection life into individuals, families, communities, 
nations, tongues, tribes, and peoples. And we're going to see later on, and I think that he, he wants it all to be salted and enlightened with the gospel and the word of God. See, that's how history works. And so all of history moves down towards the kingdom and the end, the final, final coming of the kingdom. So <coughs> now under the fall, God created us with a conscience. Every single person, Paul says, has a conscience. And the conscience causes us to realize that when somebody comes and decides to take my, my um, Samsung um, Galaxy and make it theirs, there's something wrong about that, and we get mad, correct? If somebody would come and steal your iPhone, of course you'd get mad. That's created within us. We know that's wrong. <coughs> and we know that there's something weird about a guy who is now the Secretary of uh, the Interior, I think, in the United States, who was an admiral in the U.S. Navy, but now is a lady. There's something wrong. We know there's something wrong about that because our heart has, has been created in the image of God. And so um, the God has created within us the sense of justice and of righteousness and wrongness. And we have to twist it to be able to try to redefine life. Well, that comes from the creation. Um, the fall is what twists everything. And we want to restore that um, through Christ. Now that includes the twisting of all of society and all of the structures of society. Um, we want to rebuild around God's design. Um, I call this um, Christian design or, or creational design norms. God created us and that creates a norm and we want to restore that. <coughs> so salvation then <coughs> is comprehensive. But it has to involve the gospel. So therefore, in the Africana, there was a division between Andrew Murray, pietisma, pietism, and Abraham Kuyper, comprehensive world and life view. No, I think we should be both. There's two beautiful streams. The, the power of God's Holy Spirit, the power of being converted and truly repentant and turning to Christ, and building a new um, uh, uh, um, life in uh, culture uh, and rebuilding a new life and culture through through what the Word of God says. So there's two streams that were in the Afrikaner, and I think we shouldn't fight against one another. Let's work together um, towards that. And we want to work, and I'm una uh, unashamedly a transformationalist because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And salvation is comprehensive. It's all is umfattend. And we need to see that the kingdom of God isn't come to the world to fail. The little mustard seed doesn't die. What does it do? When it's uh, come into the ground, it grows into a tree in which all the, the birds of the field should come and rest. Um, that God wants the, the, um, the mission of God upon the earth to succeed. That's why Jesus came. Up to Jesus, he let it fail so that there would be only one righteous man so that we would find our righteousness, our strength, our power in him. We're going to talk about our union with Christ. <clears throat> and uh, so we have a, a whole section about both compassion and justice, but you can't mix the two. You can't substitute justice for compassion, compassion for justice. In America, we have a big social justice movement. All it is is Marxism in a new Christian clothing. Well, th we've, th there's a whole section there that told, talks about how those two need to be both taught and both practiced, but they're not the same. Um, and then, of course, we come up to the consummation. There's a kingdom that has come. It's already come. It's growing, but it won't be perfect until the end. Theologians call that the already, but not yet, of the kingdom. So we'll talk about that more later on. So let's just look at, <coughs> and I'm going to do it out of order. The order sh is in the, in the manifesto. Creation, or it starts with God, creation, fall, comprehensive salvation, and then the growth of the kingdom to the end. Well, I'm going to start off 
in one that I think is very important, the essence of God's mission in confrontation. <coughs> so we, we, we need to rebuild culture, and we need to rebuild all of life, but it has to begin with the power of the gospel. Without the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, we're no different from a Muslim. A Muslim wants to convert the whole world to serve Allah, but it doesn't need Jesus Christ, the God-man. He's just a prophet. We need the gospel of Jesus because we're desperately in rebellion and we need our hearts to be changed. That's why we say, um, we affirm that our king has commissioned believers to disciple every folk tall in Nazi, people group we say in English, on the earth with the good news of King Jesus. Lovingly confronting people now notice, lovingly confronting people with truth. Speak the truth with love, with righteousness and judgment in the power of God's Holy Spirit. We can't change our lives, our families, our cultures, and we can't change the neighboring people's tongues, tribes, and nations without the power of the gospel. So it is impossible for Christians to live truly biblical lives without the opportunity of admonishing, encouraging, exhorting, and discipling all peoples, teaching them to do all that our king has commanded us. That's the chrut optach, the great commission. So then that means that, that um, the body of Christ needs to learn Christian discipline. You know, I, I stood in the the Nordtransvaal Strijk in 1990, and I um, um, held up a form of my what later turned into my doctoral dissertation. And I said, this documents the, f the fall of the Inchi Kerk's theology. And we're moving in a direction, I was a Odeling in the Menkis Kop Inchi Kerk, the the Inichabo, as an elder. And I said, we're moving away from the gospel. Professor Johann Haynes stood up and he says, no, it will never happen. I said, if we continue in this line, we will ordain homosexual pastors in the next few years. He said, it'll never happen. You saw what happened. And adopting two lesbians adopting a, a, a baby. It does happen. And when you depart from the gospel and there's no discipline, it leads Every denomination in the whole world that calls itself Christian, it always leads to the destruction of the gospel. It's very, very necessary that we see. That's why I wanted to start with this. So that means that <coughs> also Christians are um, needed to preserve and protect. Well, that's a controversial one. I'm going to give some controversial things here. But the... Um, the body of Christ in its various different spheres of authority, I'm a Kuyperian, um, must preserve and protect life, liberty, family, property, and peace with impartial justice. Now where do these come from? The Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments protects impartial justice, we'll see that later, property, family, liberty, no, a two-parent family, a male and female truly biological male and female family, um, a life from conception to natural death, and liberty under the God in whom we trust. There's no other liberty apart from that. So <coughs> uh, in the yellow down here, every civil ruler, whether in a broader sphere of authority or in a narrower sphere of authority, has been granted the sword Authority. Now that's something controversial, but during the French Huguenot re Reformation, John Calvin sent missionaries into, s into France. They lasted, on average, six months. The Roman church gathered them up, burned them at the stake, tied them to a pole, put wood around them, and they, they lasted only six months, and then they were dead. He sent out another wave. They burned him out of stake. Wave upon wave upon a wave of French Huguenot. And yellow viet, almost, 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 alm
een klomp van hierdie uh, uh, hier genoeg het hier beland en hulle is nou die retiefs en die duplicies en die die, die ouwens wat hier gekom het why? Well, they decided that it's time to flee sometimes it's time to stand and the, what happened with the Huguenots the princes protected the church until they gave up and then they uh, decided to compromise with the Roman Catholic Church and you know what happened 10,000 of, the, of the, the cream of the crop of the Huguenot people were slaughtered in one night because they compromised with the gospel. Well, we're, there's a responsibility of protection. Um, he says, if it's possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace. As far as it depends on you, live at peace. But if you can't, um, God has allowed us to protect our family and our people. David and his band protected themselves. And Israel even ignored, and this is something that's controversial, ignored disarmament laws, which implies the right of self-protection against tyrants. The Huguenots had a, a very powerful book called um, <sighs> Philippe Duplessis uh, Mornay. Um, yeah, Vindicte contra Tyranno. Uh, um, the justification of uh, uh, and the defense against def uh, uh, um, against tyrants. In Britain, they had a, a Lex Rex, the law is king. Uh, the Samuel Rutherford gave a powerful defense of why um, we can defend against a, a king who was going to try to uh, uh, let the Irish and the Spanish invade and forcibly reconvert to Roman Catholicism. <coughs> They tried him in a court of law and executed King Charles I for, for treason. So the, it's in the Bible and it's in our history. The essence of protection. So we are to protect. Now, so there's a commentary in this larger version which will explain all about it. I don't have time to look at it now. But for example, in command, scripture recommends that godly citizenry arm and organize themselves in militia and commando in here. That was South Africa's history. That was America's history. Um, America now has nationalized every one of the militias. <coughs> There's no more um, uh, militia that are under uh, the, the power of the governor. But they do have sheriffs elected by the people. And um, a sheriff can deputize every single one of his citizens if, uh, if, he, wanted, uh, if he could and wanted to. So it's still a little bit found in our American culture, but it's been, it is vernietig, I think, here in South Africa, the suit from India. Okay, so, <coughs> now that means also protection against imperialism. South Africa is the construction of an imperial regime. That regime is still very much uh, uh, trying to develop a new world order. We call it the Anglo-American establishment. Now there's a very powerful book called the, the Anglo, uh, it's called the Anglo-American establishment by uh, Carol Quigley that explains that South Africa has been from the beginning a very key part of this design for a new world order. Now South Africa has opted to go for an alternative world order called BRICS. But the prediction that I read just before I got here is that um, the government of South Africa is, is target now because it's now rebelling against the world order. Um, what's going to happen, we don't know, but let's pray. Because there's two rival world orders. Both are humanistic, both are anti-God, and they're fighting each other in one little country who's willing to l destroy themselves called Ukraine. Now, why does God against imperialism? It started with the Tower of Babel. Tower of Babel said, we do not want to become different peoples, tongues, tribes, and nations. We want to remain one language, one tribe, and one nation. Now, notice, that's an ancient picture by a, a Dutch skilled uh, um, painter, Peter van Bruggen, I think his name. They advertise Europe and the European Union using uh, uh, 
uh, uh, that picture. We want to restore the Tower of Babel. That's the whole purpose of the European Union. No borders, no nations, no more deportations. That's what they chant in America. And they built their parliament building as a model of that. That's who we're fighting against, folks. And Yelle had it from Javiet all the Yara. Dominic Chris had the Chasim. Now, where does it come? Well, God said He doesn't want a one world government. Why? Because humans are rebels, sinners. And He said, if humanity is united apart from the Lord Jesus, it will do something so evil that I will have to destroy it again. But I don't want to destroy it. I want to evangelize it this time. That's what the whole purpose of, of the Abrahamic covenant, we'll talk about that later, but immediately after the Tower of Babel comes the covenant God gave with Abraham that in Abraham's seed, all the families and the clans of the earth would be blessed. Now that brings us then to why is it that we want to protect our own mother uh, language? Well, mother language is extremely important. Why? God created it. I say to my students at the university, um, is Spanish evil? Because there's many Hispanic kids. Now they, they come to the United States and I personally believe if you immigrate to a country then you learn their, the language of the people. But <coughs> um, Many times, missionaries go to, to Latin America and they try to get them to learn theology in English. Now, that's crazy. You, you speak Spanish. You don't want to learn. And, and then, you know, imperialism always tries to destroy the languages of an area that's been conquered and make them the language of the imperial power. The Japanese did it with the Koreans from 1906 to 1945. The, the Chinese have done it with the Uyghurs now, with um, every other people group that's in, in the, con uh, the area of China. The, Soviet, uh, the Russians have done it, the English have done it, the French have done it. And you know, they always say, oh, it's you white Anglo-Americans that are the big sinners in America. No, I, I stood up in a meeting and I said, no, sir, this is a human problem. It's not a white American problem. Everybody thinks their culture, their language is the best and we want to make everyone like us. No, God created languages and we should teach our own children. Now this South Africa is a remnant, Yolovit, from the British Empire. Now, I am a firm believer, no, I, I, my heart from the idea from partici from imperial regime. And it shall come. But are we ready to help the, the, the Zulu? Are we ready to help the Tswana? And are we really, I think Afro Forum is doing that, to help them um, develop their own mother language. They're destroying all the, the, the good that was done. Okay, I don't agree with everything that was done in the old in the old South Africa, but much good being destroyed and everybody's being forced to learn what? I guess Nia Engels money. Engels. So it's very important. So we have got a very powerful section and a commentary on mother language education. Is it biblical? Yes. Speak to your children in every opportunity so they will listen and follow the Lord. Well, what, do you, what language do your s children speak? Afrikaans. Psalm 78, share God's principles so that they will put their trust in God. How do they understand? Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the what? The word of God. So he says there's only two paths. Meditate upon God's word in your own language, or you have a humanistic worldview, which develops, is they're, they're wanting to develop a one world government with one language. If you don't believe me, I'll give you the documentation on it. I don't have time to, more. Faith comes by hearing. So family-based education is very important. Now, that means Christian, Afrikaner Christian schools and home schools. 
There's the only two alternatives. And I, I'm, I don't think that the state has a responsibility because the state always falls under humanistic, it, it's never ever it falls under humanistic direction. And th that, would, that was one of the problems of the American system. We give all of our kids to the state and what do they do? They teach them that they're, they're, they might be a, a, a little boy, might be a girl. And they're teaching that in the public schools now. It happens here. So we affirm that is education is the process of bringing up and training children according to the wisdom and principles of biblical Christianity. Not humanistic religion. You can't mix the two. So education is not neutral. It has to come under the word of God. And we need to teach all of our children the principles of God's word starting with the beginning that we need to put our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ alone to be saved. So we affirm that Christian education is the extension of the family. The family is the basic and if the family breaks down and that's the the, how it's being designed, you break down the family so you have no other loyalty but the state. No, that's not biblical. The family is the building block of society. So to enforce uh, a loving and godly education, God has given parents, not the state, the authority. And so the children become like their teacher. So we're to, to model in the power of God's Holy Spirit and in the power of the gospel how to live so that our children can become like us as we follow King Jesus. Paul said, become like me as I follow Jesus. And that's what the, t the task of the parents is. So why should a Christian parent turn his lamarkis over to the wolves? No, don't that on. Let's skip the wolf and do it. They want to w teach them humanistic wisdom, man-centered wisdom. Very few of our, uh, of our, our lambs escaped unharmed. So many children in, in my chamienta back in America, they've sent their children to uh, secular universities or secular schools, and so many of them. We know family after family after family where the children are in total rebellion against the Lord and against his word. Now, what about private property? Well, private property actually flows out of the nature of God. Now, some of you may or, uh, disagree, but I think that God within himself is both really three and really one. There's private property. The son is not the father. The father is not the spirit. The spirit's not the father. There's something unique and private about the sonship of the son and the fatherness of, God, of fa the father and of, of the spirit. But they also hold uh, a, a unique community. <clears throat> well, God has created us to mirror in a certain sense uh, with a defi defined sense the, tr the trinity. So all three persons share the unity of the, uh, of the Father's glory. Each person has a unique property, and the whole God had, has a common property of full divinity. It's a complete three in one. Well, <coughs> if you're going to have private property, it can't be held by the community. There is distinct property, but then a people can defend those properties to, together. Now, the Jews did it. They rebuilt the wall. Now, in the Christian evangelical and reformed Christian churches, they say, don't build the wall. You know, you, that's Trump's idea. Well, if you look at cultures that survive, they build walls. China, the Great Wall of China. How many of you have been to China and seen that? I was thinking that maybe there might be one here. Um, <laughs> <coughs> but the Great Wall of China is 13,000 kilometers long. It took them several hundred years. Generation after generation after generation, they built that wall to protect the, the land. What did the Jews do? They came back from exile, 
what is the, the what what is the key goal? One of the key goals Nehemiah and Nehemiah had rebuild the wall. And he says, take your sword in your hand and your trowel in your other hand, you know, <coughs> and protect the wall from the inv- from Tobiah and in the Andra ones that well that from Nitach. And the Andra mit the Andra hunt bowed it. So that is what, that's what we want to do. We want to both protect private property and then the uh, a people's property together is both y- unity and diversity. We protect it together. Well, who owns all property anyhow? It's God. But he has given each people a, a place on the earth to, to make Christian. And you say, well, where do you get that? Well, we'll talk about that in the later lectures. Uh, lectures. But God wants every area of the earth to be Christianized with the gospel of the Lord Jesus and that we would grow into a, a group of people's tongues and nations that love the Lord Jesus but each worshiping the Lord on our own land. Now, they say that that's heretical. Apartheid is heresy. Now, some of the things they said in that book was good. That was, uh, what was her name? Um, from Western Cape University. Um, he was in Sabi Bitti van the Prat. It was, oh, that was Baya Yara Khalida. Data Yara Khalida. In Alcofal, you know, they said that, that, that it is an absolute wrong thing to say that a people has a right to protect their own land. No, that's not true. Um, yeah, well, he's given us a land to protect and make it under the rule of King Jesus to give him the glory in that land <coughs> and help others also, not just for ourselves, but for others and help them also protect their land. <coughs> so God has given humans um, dominion but not kingship. We're not to be kings. Now, that's very also controversial on the theological circles right now. They say, well, humans were created to be little kings. No, we're not. We're created to be governors. What's the difference between a governor and a king? Exercises the authority of the one. Who's our king? Jesus. Jesus. King Jesus. We're not kings. We're exercising authority only under him and his mandate. (coughs) So we're, we're to be um, following his commandments and his design and his norms, not ours. So <coughs> everybody, God wants, every family, tongue, tribe, and nation, God wants to come into covenant with himself. And what is a covenant? Yeah, this is my um, summary of what a covenant is. There's a king, King Jesus. There's administrators. Those, that's us. There's norms or laws. There's oaths. The duop is in from the, from the, um, the to, to lay off an oath. And there's sanctions, blessings, and curses. And then there's passed on to your, your children, your covenant children. That's the way um, God designed us. We, he wants every nation, tongue, tribe, and, and people to come into covenant with him starting with the individuals, the families, communities, and so that um, in the end, I'm convinced that the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. It's quoted twice in the Bible. Um, God gives us these principles. The Old Testament is just one example of a nation who um, God gives his laws and he, he gives how to live it out. Now, we're to take those principles and bring it over into South Africa. How are we going to live it out? Well, we, we have to read the whole Bible. It's not just the New Testament, the whole Bible to develop these principles. And the, so the heart of God's law, his Torah, Torah means the instruction of a father for his children. It's not, it shouldn't be translated as vet, of law. It's in, instruction of a father for his children. The heart of it is God. He's holy, he's compassionate, and he's just. We want to be like him. And he gives us two summary commands. 
Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And what? And your neighbor as yourself. And it summarized the two commandments. There's four that love God, and six, you, if you've been through catechism, you know this, four about loving God, six that love your neighbor. Now, how is that applied? That's, where, that's what's called the case laws. And each one of them applies one of the Ten Commandments. Well, God's word is very powerful, and we need to learn and be read in it. Um, when, um, um, Paul from, from the um, Transvaal Republic, he, was a, he read the Bible, and they tried to design the Freistaat in the Transvaal Republic according to biblical principles. We've forgotten that. Jan Smuts had the yellow dung for nietig in my meaning. Okay, that's just my opinion. I'll throw that out. You don't have to believe if you want. Uh. Did you know that Jan Smuts was a pantheist? There is a, um, his, his whole book, Holism and Evolution, is pantheism, pure and simple. So what do we learn from the Ten Commandments? that there's two commandments that teach about God's the liberty under the God in whom we trust. I am the, God, the Lord your God who rescued you from the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me and don't make any idols or any two-dimensional pictures of God. There's two that protect life. What are, what are the two that protect life? Two commandments. One is very obvious. Don't kill, don't murder, actually. And refresh your life by having one day of rest, seven. There's two that protect family. Don't commit adultery, honor your father and mother. There's two that protect impartial justice. When you put your hand on the Bible in America, until the last 10 years, one guy did it on the Quran, we always put our hand in the Bible, we put up our, hand, our right hand, and we say, I swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. So help me Allah. No. So help me God. And that protects impartial justice. Don't perjure yourself. Don't lie. And when you take an oath, make sure that you keep the oath that, you, you, that you've made before the Lord. Now, private property. Which two protect private property? Do not steal and... And don't covet. There's two of these commandments for every one of these. Now, the U.S. Constitution put in the right to life, liberty, and property, but they presupposed two-parent heterosexual family. There was never, ever any thought. In fact, I pray that the Supreme Court will overthrow the gay marriage decision, just like they overthrew the, the Roe v. Wade decision. And pray for those justices. So there's five justices. They're trying to, they, they will try to assassinate. There was one person that already has been arrested to try to assassinate. Um, that gave me a little bit of hope. Um, God wants us to stand with his word and not with our word. And that's all here in, this, in the manifesto. So there's five foundational pillars of Christian, uh, Christianizing society. And that, that's what, and even though Thomas Jefferson, the, the writer of the U.S. Declaration of Independence, he said this, and it's right. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men are created equal under law. Now, that's, they didn't mean equal in um, uh, um, talents, equal in brain power. That's not what they meant. Equal under the law. That if a rich man or a poor man lies, both come out of the same punishment. But in our culture, my culture, the president can lie under oath. They just give him a little fine. And then others, they sit in the throne for 25 years. There is nirachni, the same straf for the same crime. We're created equal under the law. They're endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. Where do the rights come from? Not from the humanist manifesto, not from the... Uh, from the, um, what is the freedom, uh, what is the ANSI as a, the one? The Freedom Charter. 
not not from that. It doesn't come from any document of man or the the rights of the of the the UN Charter. It comes from God. And among these are life, liberty, and, pr- and the pursuit of happiness. Within the framework of God's five rights and responsibilities, there's freedom to pursue growth. Now that's what the Christian worldview is all about. And each of these der- derived, you can see a liberty, impartial justice, life, family, and property. It comes out of God's character to love God and to love your neighbor as herself. When you start to tear down one of those pillars, what happens to the ceiling, to the roof? Collapses. If you look at America, every single one is, is collapsing, and the, ce- and, the, and the roof is falling very rapidly down. It's going to happen here, too. So God wants us to protect against imperialism and against um, any attack upon um, the, the right of mother language education. And now, notice, here's what God says in Habakkuk. I don't have time to read it, but you can write it down. God is against uh, imperialism. He says that they come in and they sweep across the whole earth and um, they take away everybody's property and make them and deport them across the earth. America's very good at that. My... When, when my wife was born in the state of North Carolina, they took a, the most Christian of all the, the peoples, the Cherokee, and they took them clear across the nation and maybe a third of the Native American. They were, m- most of them were Christian. To this day, the Cherokee are the most Christian people, uh, Native American people, and, and destroyed them. God hates um, that, and he says that um, the Babylonians, this is talking about the Babylonians, it's like one who reaches into a nest and he grabs all the wealth of the nations. The people g- are gathering all the eggs as I gathered up the countries. Not one of them flapped a wing or opened its mouth to chirp. He's talking about how the Babylonians destroyed everything. Well, God hates that in kind of imperialism. I mean, he hates British and American imperialism as well. So God gave t- title to the land, but with stipulations to serve the Lord with respect, to honor him and his gospel. And if we don't honor the gospel, God allows us to be conquered. I expect America to fall. I told, uh, when I went back to America in 1993, I said to the people, what South Africa is experiencing, we will experience within the next 20 to 30 years, and we're going through the exact same thing. You guys can help us. So, in conclusion, what does God want us to do with the land he's given to us? Bevuen, bevolk, bewerk, bewar, bewapen, begrens, en almuur. That's our marching orders for the future. It may take 100 years. It may take 50 years. It may take 20. We don't know. Stay the course. Be faithful to the gospel. Build families. Build alternative institutions, just like Afri Forum is trying to do, and see what God will do. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for the gospel, and we thank you for the, the manifesto that Dominicus developed that gave us these basic principles, and Father, all of the wisdom that's found in the Bible about these principles, and Father, we can't fight something with nothing. Give us wisdom. Father, let us stand firm in the Lord, in the strength of his might, and put on the whole armor of God, and having done everything in the midst of the war to stand firm with the high praise of God in our mouth and the two-edged sword of his word in our hand. And Father, I pray um, that um, all the peoples, the Zulu, Osa, the Tswana, the Sutu, Afrikaner, and the new urban anglicized people, that would each seek the Lord and worship him. And we ask this in your name, Lord. Amen.